Good morning or afternoon to most of you in Europe and evening to you guys in the US. Welcome, as you can probably hear. I've uh, came down with a cold or a bug or something this week. That's why I didn't do a midweek stream. Felt terrible. Don't feel the best today, but I turned up for you. And <clears throat> hopefully getting back to some normal routines will help me sort of get my feet back on the road again. Anyway. This is an interesting and repeated comment over and over again about taking risks and when are you being prudent or when, when are you just being afraid? Now, I hear a lot of this type of comment, this kind of comment, no matter how good your relationship is, no matter how compatible you are together in that moment, every woman has or should be has the power to ruin your life in an instant and that's the truth that's true technically every woman can ruin you just as technically there is danger in driving there is a there is a risk in everything but the risk diminishes the more sensible and prudent you are the way you go about things so <clears throat> it's very risky and I would say reckless to ride a motorcycle without a helmet, drunk, at high speeds in wet weather, weaving in and out of cars on the freeway and not paying attention. Uh, your chances of having a, an accident are almost guaranteed. It's not the exception, but, and let's stick with motorcycles because cars are a lot safer. If you drive very carefully, you've got experience. I mean, there's still a high degree, but you will do what you want to do and what gives meaning to your life if you feel alive on a motorcycle. I've said before, the if you just look at the stats, the chances of businesses failing in the first year or two are upwards of 90%. Whereas marriages, 50% of them end. And so marriage should be less risky, but all we hear is, the um the dangers of having marriages last and how women initiate nearly 80 percent of them and, and so on and so forth and and that's all accurate generally speaking statistically but how you go about things and when people tell me uh, i know that some people roll their eyes who are very mathematical and statistic based they like to have a black and white answer either you can press the button and it works or you press the button and it doesn't work and we all intuitively know that human beings and our own likes and dislikes and how we talk, and if we say things a certain way, people get us as opposed to another way. So we're not black and white. There's a lot of gray area and there's a lot of lack of communication and a lack of courage. You know, why does one couple work whereas another one isn't? It's not due to stats. It's not just due to men and women are different. The problems we all individually face, these topics that we're having about human experience, social dynamics and interaction, it is about us getting cognitively lazy, being more afraid than we ought to be, and uh, not being honest about ourselves and how we cognitively excuse ourselves from not doing something that's a little bit more difficult or requires a little bit more effort or courage to get us across the line, whereas it's easier to just fall into old habits and let our biology and our autopilot just... Um, step off that comfortable cliff that we've always been stepping off of all the time. And it's easy to do that because it's comfortable. Our survival, our, our, our survival brain, our bodies think, yes, human, do what we've always done because we're still here, we're surviving, therefore don't do anything new. The new is unknown. Yes, you could progress and have a better life and be happier, but you don't know, there's a question mark. There's no question mark in repeating yesterday. Because you repeat yesterday, you'll have the same yesterday today. And, you know, you can repeat the same Tuesday until the grave. But the thing is, if you don't take the risk, and I'm, saying, and, and I'm talking about a calculated risk. I'm not saying being reckless. I use the metaphor quite often. If you really need to jump out of the plane, finally, jump out of the plane with a parachute, not without one, and well-packed, and you've trained... So the risk of danger occurring to you, the, the risk of danger to an experienced parachutist 
who's done the due, due diligence is lower than, I don't know, a car crash, yet everyone gets into a car or train, plane, bus, automobile, and they don't think anything of it. They just think, well, there is a bit of risk, but let's be realistic. If I'm careful, the risks are largely mitigated. But there's this consensus about, uh, around everyone that it's black and white. Now, if you get into the relationship, it's just a matter of time before a woman does this. You know, every woman has the power. Well, every man has the power to backhand every woman if he wants to. And it's not just the law telling him not to. Let's be realistic. Ladies out there who have had brothers and, and fathers and people who actually care about them. If you know your father's not going to do those things, you've got nothing to worry about. Technically, yes, they do have it within themselves to do it. But will they express it? Come on. I think it's just a, um, the, the people out there that they use the exception to show that your argument is not perfect and therefore they swallow the whole argument. That is so stupid and childish and it doesn't make any sense. You can't point to the minority or the exception. If you've gotten to know a girl, say for instance, from a guy getting to know a girl, because I'm speaking to my, mainly guys on my, on my channel. The guys that are afraid and, and women have the potential to do a lot. If you take your time, you're aware of all of the red pill stuff out there and you're informed by it, but you're calm, you're not angry, and you're paying attention to red flags and things like that. That's fine. But be a calm person assessing the situation. And if you see that she's politically inclined and she's not your type of person, you don't go out with her. There's something about people's lack of will and choice that they think, well, I, I've got no power. I can't say anything. It's women's society, they have all the power. I have no say. I can't open my mouth. I can't say anything. You can, uh, which is why I encourage guys to speak and think better because then when you get in front of Chicky Poo on a date, you're able better to read what she says, listen better. And this is important, guys. It's not knowing what to say. It's listening well. If you go on a date and she's silent, talk a bit, but be aware if she's not speaking back and question is like you're, you're quiet you're shy you're not speaking very much um do you want to be here like i'm like you're not answering questions or what however it might be be aware if this person's quiet or shy or not answering questions but i think learning to speak and listen and and uh, talk better you're, you're able to better recognize these dangerous women the women who will at a moment's notice because they're stupid and entitled and silly and they're afraid and they don't know themselves, they will just jump to <coughs> the government or the law or something or politics. And what kind of conversation are you going to have? It's as simple as this. You go on a date. If the conversation is very political, if it's not about her, it's not about you, your personal desires, who you are, you don't see the caring nature come out in your conversation. Why would you want to be with that person? But if you're going there talking about politics and men and women, how you hate each other and it's not fair and women always do this. And she says, well, men always do this. It's like, really, do you want to go out with that person? That's why I say stop watching so much drama filled red pill content because you condition yourself with that and you start to see, well, that is a relationship, that dynamic between men and women on those podcasts. That is what it's like out there today on dates. And then when you go on dates, that seems familiar. And then you start having debates with women. Whereas if you refuse to have debates and you don't watch these stupid drama filled podcasts and, you know, the popular ones out there, then when you go on a date and she starts talking like one of the chicks on these podcasts or, uh, and or when girls go on dates and they hear you talking like one of the hosts on the podcast, they will understandably and quite rightly not want to go out with you anymore because I would not want to go out with a woman. If you flipped it around and she was like a, a girl power chick on one of these podcasts talking from a woman's point of view about uh, high value women and what men are doing wrong and how women are better and men need to step up and things like that. If that person started having that language on a date, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not going to see you anymore because you're just a political puppet, uh, a voice in front of me. You're not a real person. Jane hasn't turned up. The feminist called Jane through all of their languages turned up now why i this video to me I, I think it bears repeating 
in terms of uh, how important that is to take a calculated risk and find out. Otherwise, you won't know yourself. You know, you won't know if something's true. If I just take the science as truth or what someone said, even if I trust them and they've had experience, I can trust them to a degree. But if I can never experience good things in life or the company of someone and ideally want it, right? And I know there's a good way to do it. And everyone's just telling me, no, no, don't bother about doing it. I've done it. It was fun. Don't bother. It would be the same as a business person saying, listening to someone said, yeah, I tried it this way. I failed and it's not worth it. I'm never doing it again. But the way in which they do it and their attitude, you know, I'm not like that and I wouldn't do it that way. And what I want is different to you, the business I want to start. It's the same thing when dating. You need to know what kind of person you are and the, pe the people you take advice from, there's no point taking advice from an arrogant materialistic chad out there who's had problems with women and you can, he's entertaining, but at the same time, you know, you're not him. Be careful who is mentoring you and who you can actually be simpatico with, with the advice. So don't go out there talking like them if that's not you. If you know you can do better and you speak differently and you would date better and you want different things from dating, like you might not want kids, but the people that are giving you the blueprint of dating, they, they're directed towards kids or traditionalism or whatever, but you're a person that's introverted, artistic, you don't want kids, you want to grow your own vegetables, you want to live in uh, the, the, um, the country, you want to raise livestock or something. You're a very different person. You need to really see what will fit you in your lifestyle. And the person that's, that you're listening to, they might have good points objectively and generally, but specifically in your world, you need to find your own answers or talk to people or find mentors that live in your world and want the same things that, you're, that you want in your world. Does that make sense? So um, uh, let me read out uh, some comments. Prince Revolver, he just gave me a super chat. So thank you. Uh, before I read it out, let me just uh, comment to the rest of you. If you're here during the live stream and you would like to le uh, me to read out a comment or a question, as long as it's proper and civil during this stream, uh, just like fit fingers here, see the three circles he left, leave me three circles. Or if you want to guarantee that I read out your comment during this live stream, drop me a super chat, just like Prince Revolver here. Thank you very much for the donation. He says, we also lost the art of communication due to the texting and having pseudo relationships with people from a distance. 100% Prince Revolver, I, I agree. And the unfortunate thing is like my message and a lot of people's message to go out there and touch grass and at least say hello to the checkout chick and not just mumble your way through and get back home. And so you're online in front of a screen. Uh, the reason is if, if the problems you're talking about that you're frustrated with women, it's the reality of women. It's the frustration of going on a real date, trying to have a real relationship for the guys who want a real family and kids. That's what you want to get to. But if you're just swimming in the artificial pseudo reality field and you're just text texting and communicating and you're living here through your own perceptions, you're only having a relationship with yourself. You're not having a relationship with any real person. And you're not testing if your theories, whatever you think about men and women and relationships is actually real because it's only true if it's applicable and you can test it like a scientist. Okay, if this is true, if I think I should stand up for myself and say A, B, and C, let me try and do it, however nervous and nerve-wracking it is, to a woman, and let me try and speak better. Let me try and be confident instead of being confident away from the from the things I'm, I'm nervous. You're nervous around women and dating, but you're going to be confident away from them with your friends and say, oh, well, if I was with a woman and she did this, I would just kick her to the curb. And then when you go on a date, you're a five-year-old going, <laughs> yeah, I'll do whatever you say. I like whatever you like. Yeah, I love the notebook. I love Pretty Woman. It's What's the point of theoretically being right online, but you're not practically and realistically in your empirical life, you're not right at all. I, I personally think, and I'm talking to myself here, it's cowardice because I used to do this a lot. And just because I can speak well, I know I'm intelligent and I know all this stuff, why am I dumber than the idiots out there that I say are, are stupider than me? It just doesn't make any practical sense. I should be better 
than those bimbos out there who are always in control and taking advantage of me and I'm always submitting to them and I'm always a five-year-old in front of them. It's my problem. It's a me problem. It's not a them problem. <clears throat> Again, you've got to put up with my cough. I turned up. Just say thank you and deal with it. <laughs> uh, Brian says, uh, I think most of the successful relationships last because two people in the relationship are mentally healthy. Yes, I think communication is the biggest thing. That seems to be more rare these days. Maybe it seems that way due to internet. Yeah, there's uh, healthy people, but I've I I've said this many times before. My failed relationships before Stephanie, I've gone out with, I would say before her, 70% of the people, they were fine. They were decent. They were uh, mentally healthy, generally speaking. Everyone's got their quirks and whatever and their fears and their childhood traumas and whatever. But just generally... Most people are healthy, but they're just different. And you end up going nuts over how someone left a cup on the table or whatever, because you know you're not compatible, you can't talk, you don't share your inner world, and you never see eye to eye, and you don't want to communicate, and you don't actually genuinely care about the other person. You don't. You can see it. The other person doesn't care about me. You're just two frustrated, nice people trying to tug a war each other over to, to your side and her over to, to hers. Fitfinger says, uh, I suppose that what people are trying to figure out at the end of the day is the increasing complex world is what what are the different levels of risk and correlating rewards? And I would encourage people to be less clinical than that. This is very scientific. You cannot solve your personal emotional problems out there and how you learn to dance with them and how you understand them and how do you speak those feelings and what you want and who you are with this very STEM-based scientific analysis. All of this stuff is really well and good when you're on your own and understanding it with the guys, but find us a philosophical language by which you can actually speak those words normally. Lower it and adjust it to the people you're talking to. So test it when you're around family that are just kind of normal. And if they get onto this subject about the world and men and women, don't use red pill jargon. Use understanding and, and talk like a normal human being on their level, but express the ideas you want to express. And when you go on a date, you can... You can adjust to talk on a date, but you're still you. Learn learn how to be a normal human being and not to be a compartmentalized, you know, red pill warrior with the jargon. Um, so this is correct, but I would warn against guys just learning, training themselves in that little bubble online because we can realistically see when women do it in their little girl power groups, and then they're kind of uh, terrible out in the world where you're just wanting to have a, a nice time with them. Their politics in, intrude too much. Prince Revolver says, most people, men, are afraid of relationship risks because of fear of not trusting ourselves and afraid of losing the opposite. SEX. Yeah, we're afraid of Chicky Poo going away. The eggs are going away. Say anything and agree with anything to keep him here and impregnate her and... Yeah, I think it's the fear and the things left unsaid. We're embarrassed that we didn't stand up for ourselves. We get online, and then after the breakup, we have this very real open analysis, and we're honest about it to the guys. And rather than saying, yeah, I should have said this, I should have done this, I'm going to do this next time, I'm going to try my best to do this next time and make it be determined, we blame them because we know what we should have done, but we're too embarrassed to say, yeah, they are the way they are, but... <clears throat> why did I stay? Why do I accept them? Why do I keep trying? Oh, because I'm a nice guy. Semantics. Nice guy, doormat. You know, the longer you're there, I would say you're more of a doormat than a nice guy. The first time, before you know that she's going, you might be nice just to clarify, oh, did you hear me correctly? Let me give you a chance to reciprocate and be a fair human being. She could be nice back. But if you're continually nice, no matter how much someone wipes their ass with you, then you're a doormat. You can say, oh, it was a nice piece of toilet paper, but that's all you are. Ah, thank goodness for the mute button. Um, Fifth Finger says, and with relationship dynamics changing with new environments, perception of risk gets very complicated when you have to trust other individuals to be the same level as you. You can't. I keep saying again, the only way you can try and make as best sense of it as you can is to speak and force them to articulate. If they're quiet, don't trust any more 
then you're able to trust. And I don't trust unless the other person can communicate consistently over time so they don't contradict themselves. And I see them much more clearly through not what I believe they could be, and I hope they could be, all oh, this, oh, look at this hot 10 out of 10. She's 30 or 40 years old. I can't believe no one has snapped her up. There's probably a reason. Speak to her and you'll probably find out. Yeah, you could get the unicorn, highly unlikely, but dialogue and communication is the only way you're going to see if you can trust someone today, especially the older you are, and especially with the political environment out there. Men and women really mistrust each other, and the large majority go on dates. Women go on dates, already going on a date with the enemy, and you have to prove that you're not a villain. And men still go on dates because we're hardwired. We want women, but women are even harder to get today than they used to be before. Yeah, you can bang cheeks if you're you know, ab above the, like in the 20% or whatever, or if you can game women or do it in a Machiavellian way. But I would say, um, yeah, men and women, it's very hard today. So um, I, I keep going back to talking and expressing yourself honestly. It's the only way you're going to make sure. And you're going to give yourself the best chance to know that you can trust your partner. And when you say you love them, you know you love them and you can explain, explain why. And you've got the evidence because there's all this risk, but no one will take the risk to to gain the evidence over time that it's true, and it and they've got the evidence behind them to prove it's true. Sure, all the strangers out there, of course, they've got the potential to ruin you, but if you do it sensibly, no matter what anyone says, I can just give you story after story and example after example with me and Stephanie as evidence as to why the chances of what you're saying of what people like this are saying is almost tiny that I don't have to worry about it. But I agree with the average stranger out there, I would be very wary. And if you refuse to talk, if you don't believe in communication, that's too intellectual, then you'll get what you get and you'll get the, you'll get the stats. You'll be the stats. You will. Uh, Malay says, hope your flu gets better gets better weather is changing in australia some is close to over yeah it's uh, high 30s today it's very hot there's nothing worse than having a cold or a flu while it's really humid and hot it's terrible big ol says um <clears throat> Human, I don't think being articulate makes you attractive. Most of the John Travolta's and Patrick Swayze's of the world spoke in slang and half sentences and women love them. Yeah, they're celebrities though. Uh, your celebrity status <coughs> goes a long way in making you attractive. I remember uh, dating a girl. I went on two dates with her. And on the second date, I remember I invited her over and uh, we were just watching TV as we were talking. The TV was on. And at that time... Donald Trump was on and uh, I kind of made some sort of comment about this guy's funny or ridiculous or something and she says I but he's kind of hot he's got something about him and I laughed and I said yeah he's rich and he's he's got a lot of power and status that's why no nah, but you know if I if I if I met him you know going out with him I would shave his head and put him in a better outfit I go yeah, okay that didn't last not because of that but there were a lot of things wrong but from that you can glean why she wasn't the kind of person for me and and why i knew it that was just another a moment that i knew ah just more blocks building a wall between you and me sweetheart keep going brian says any woman can versus any man can if men were that terrible women would not go out of the house and yeah and what men do would be obvious what women can do is invisible and not telegraphed continued um, did you continue this sentence? Brian? I don't see it. Sorry. Maybe it's a uh, YouTube deleted it. I can't see the continuation of your comment. Um, remember as Trot man says, it seems like everyone nowadays though is just waiting for their turn to talk about themselves during conversations and don't care about what we have to say. All people care about is being heard. My problem is people talk about stuff. 
I would be happy if they talked about themselves. I just find today people are, are, are personally avoidant. Yes, you've got people who are selfish and just talk about me, me, me. <clears throat> but um, my my gripe today is that people just talk about the the what. And I, I, I like conversations about the how and the why and, and the personal. And uh, I, I would encourage you, I think the more you find this sort of stuff important and essential and beautiful and necessary you learn how to communicate your stuff maybe first on paper write it down if it's too hard you're fumbling around like say you record yourself and you want to hear yourself speak and get better at speaking the first step is to read a bit more get your thoughts down on paper think better by doing that you know journal not in the cringy way they do it today but just write down your thoughts like get all your frustrations out work them out like philosophical formulas and, and talk to people about it try to balance things and make sense of them not bias like you know what are you doing wrong what could you do better but what's objectively wrong about the way people act and how women are unfair and things like that be very black and white and honest about it don't just try and blame people to make yourself feel better but where you can improve improve and then call a spade a spade when um the world is not playing ball fairly with you and then don't pick them <clears throat> so be more articulate in your thinking and then learn to speak better and then uh i think you'll 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 take less risky risks you'll take less reckless ones and i'm always encouraging guys when you self-reflect you know what you want you can speak what you want you communicate clearly on a date and you insist that they do through this conversation. Do you really think me, in the older I got, when I was going on dates, the way I speak, I'm like this. I'm very talkative. I'm very curious. I want to have fun. And I, I make them talk or not. And if they don't talk, they're nervous. They feel uncomfortable. There's no second date because they don't want to be around me because they don't want to open up, which is fine. Or they, they, they are forced to talk because my cadence requires them to keep up. I'm talking, I'm interacting here. If you want to be left behind and just kind of be a quiet mouse in the corner, I can talk to myself. But I'm too curious and I want something back from you. I want to play tennis with you. And and when you start doing that on paper with yourself, you know what a you start realizing when you're just being afraid. It's gone from being you calculating a risk and then human you're just scared you're just procrastinating and preparing and preparing and learning all this stuff and being perfect and fine-tuning your masculinity and whatever else else these guys are talking about and when i go on the date i'm going to be perfect it's going to go bang 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 uh girlfriend moving family trust life together 3.5 kids uh millionaire entrepreneur like no it's not like this perfect organized formulaic life this concatenation of perfect events falling like dominoes, it ain't going to happen. Especially if you ignore what you really need and who you are. And I'd like to uh, give uh, pose this to you guys. Are you prudent or are you simply afraid of the dark? Think of yourself how you were when you're irrationally fearful when you're a young, a, a young person. We prepare, prepare past the point where anyone else could have started but you want to be ultra perfect there could have been a person who has, has spent their th 20s and 30s they prepared and trained enough and then they started climbing mountains or parachuting because that's what they really wanted to do and they've enjoyed it it was risky but they trained and did it with their eyes open whereas you're saying well i'm not as stupid as them i'm going to make it 100 percent safe for me but all you're doing is really if you stop starting before you rationally can and you don't want to even skin your knee and learn from a failure or a lesson or a little bump then you're never going to do it you are going to get used to not doing it you're going to get used to not learning anything because you're afraid of failing and if it's a recoverable risk and if you can do it again and better and better and better and get more skill it's never failure I've drawn all my life. You think when I first started drawing that I was amazing? Do you think I should have studied the masters, not picked up a pencil, not drawn or shown anyone anything, not tried, not talked about it, kept it in silence, 
studied, 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 and only now, when I can't study, I've read every single book, I know everything, now, when I go out there, I'm going to be Yoda. I'm going to be Michelangelo. No. Fear. Irrational fear. There's preparation and then there's just procrastination and fear, gentlemen. And I, again, I'm talking to myself here. I'm not pointing at anyone in particular, you little snowflakes. I'm talking about myself here. We know that there's a point where your dad would have said, come on, just go. And they push you into the deep end and you learn to swim. Um, let's see. Adam Super AC says, you've got one life too short to put up with crap. I agree. Examan says, I went to a 50th birthday party last night with old school friends and seen my old school girlfriends and they are all fat and miserable and really felt sorry for them. Yeah. In comparison to others, it can help you. It can do one of two things. It can help you say, I'm glad I'm not them and I made the right decision as long as you're being honest. But sometimes it's like, there are, I, I noticed there's some people saying, what have I done? I could have had a family now, but I've spent the last 10 to 15 years in the red pill. Or women say, I've been believing in feminism. Feminism lied to me. The manosphere lied to me. No, it didn't. You, you lied to yourself. You, you felt comfortable looping in, com in the comfort food of I'm great and the world is wrong and women are bad and therefore I'm superior. High five, I won today. No, you didn't. Maybe you did. If, you, if you're happy, fair enough. But <clears throat> assess the situation. If you really want something and there's too many people who are succeeding and it's not luck. They're doing it with the right attitude, the right will. They've got courage. They're not reckless. They're experienced. They're better than you because they keep doing it and learning new things. Then do it better. Do it better. Go after what you want. And I realize, objectively, I will agree with you, the environment out there, our grandparents had it easier to try without the dangers, uh, the, the legal ones and the way women are and, and the men and women are against each other and stuff and mistrust each other. They had a lot easier. <clears throat> they had similar kind of fears about going up and nervousness and things like that and compatibility and, you know, religious kids, no, whatever. But uh, I will give you that. But aside from that, if you really want something and there's too much evidence, you can do it, but you just need to try harder. And it's not as there's certain avenues that aren't as easy as our parents had it. But then there's other avenues where we have the benefit that our parents didn't have. We can casually date and get to know someone. We, we can live with them beforehand, which was almost impossible back then. And you couldn't do it. It was like being gay just to live with your partner. Now you can do that you, to find out if you're compatible. So there's certain things where, while we've got it harder in other inter, inter, um, inter-social aspects, uh, we have the benefit of others. So just do your due, gil due diligence. That's all I would offer to you guys. But you know what I'm going to say? Do what you want. But when I'm... When I'm ranting and being forceful, I'm really telling you my point of view, what I would do, what I'm telling a younger version of myself, if I could go back in time and forcefully put this, put this experience, lesson, wisdom, will, and drive, lack of fear back into the younger me, this is what I would do. And I would insist upon it. And I would get a lot of the things sooner in my life and I would be a lot happier and I would waste a huge huge less amount of time than I did. Wasted time is very, very a hard hit for a guy, I feel like. And guys don't admit it and they go around it and they blame everything and anything except themselves. Guys tend to be better than women. Uh, a lot of women, I don't see many women saying I'm sorry or I was wrong. Women can, but uh, generally guys are starting to become like women where because you just save so much time. Fix the problem. If the problem's you, fix it. Your attitude's the problem. If your attitude shift will fix a lot of things, try it. And if it does, great. You're going to have a better life. You'll get the rewards you were frustrated that you didn't get before then. Any, if you would, any final questions, please super chat me here during the stream or add three 
yellow circle emojis like this to your question or comment to me and I will try to answer it if it's polite and mature and not trolly. Otherwise, we'll wrap this up soon. We've been going for how long now? Just over half an hour. Ah, Prince Revolver, thank you again for the super chat. Prince Revolver's uh, asked the question, at some point you have to leave the nest. I appreciate everything I've learned from this space, but I can't see myself in my 40s having the same discussions, yelling at four walls. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Look, some people point at me and say, human, you're over 50 and you're still doing this stuff. I'm trying to have a just a calm mentoring conversation the way I would maybe to a younger guy at a bar and I got along with him and he was frustrated and wanted to impart some wisdom. I'm talking to a younger version of myself. I'm not, I haven't been angry for a few years now. I let go of the dating of, I don't want to regurgitate a lot of what I've already said in the past. Some of you might disagree. Uh, a lot of you people who are still thinking, ah, oh, humans angry, humans. Otherwise, why would you be like, I don't care. My, my life is very different from what it, it was five years ago, 10 years ago. You look at my older content, yeah, you can pick moments where I was going frustrated, I was with the wrong person, I was uh, pissed off at women at the very beginning and really pulling what little hair I did have left out. But either be happy or, or not, what can I tell you? Look, <clears throat> I failed many times before I met Stephanie. And I was naive and I tried again. I tried with different women, different ways. Until I kind of clued in with how important compatibility is and how largely irrelevant all women are. Because I went there with the template of all women are the same, all men are the same. It's about rolling the dice and having the luck to meet someone and they're nice. And then you can all agree on the structural stuff. We'll get married, we'll have kids, we'll go on holidays, I'll take you on dates. But if you don't trust them and you don't care about them and you don't want to be with them and they annoy the crap out of you it doesn't matter you're going to break apart any sensible person who wants meaning in their lives and who who wants to feel alive and, and is intellectually curious and at least a little bit philosophical if you're into marcus aurelius and the stoics and and the things that guys post like the really sensible stoic things you are going to ask these questions when you're not happy with chicky poo she, you know she's terrible you know the answers you cannot pretend you are better off not taking that step and knowing beforehand so i failed many times before stephanie she's my sixth relationship and as i said i i had serious multi-year relationships in the past and most of them were largely fine okay decent women one or two were not cases yeah when i was young and naive and my fault right but i was incompatible with incompatible nice people but i failed many you could call them failures and i will call them failures for you guys but i learned from them and it's like i learned not not just not that woman again me with that woman never again and i can see why i don't fit and i couldn't speak and i wasn't myself and I could be myself with the guys, but I can't with her. Ah, there's another domino. It's not men and women. It's my woman, the, the person I say yes to. Can I, is she a friend? Those very important human and very stoic characteristics that we all ignore and we just want the hot chick or we want the hot guy. And it's like, how can I excuse it with science? All women are the same, so I don't have to bother even talking to her. I don't have to be courageous enough to tell her who I am. It's just like, it's all biology. We procreate. And if you're lucky, you stay together and she doesn't bust your balls. It's like, nah, I don't accept that because I keep getting disappointed and life is too short to have that lack of courage or lack of control. Why can't I say no to a woman? Why can't I reveal who I am? I, I need it to know empirically what did and didn't work. And no, the the manosphere and all of that accurate information the way men and women and society and human beings generally behave while accurate was almost completely useless when i was trying to connect a personal relationship a potential personal relationship between me and pumpkin sitting across from me on a date no matter what i want if it's not there it's not there i cannot sit at the table 
watching a horror movie when I want to watch a comedy. I can't make it that. It's not. And the realization of the compatibility or incompatibility is where you start having better dates, where you don't go on dates where you would have wasted your time beforehand. Because I tried my parents' ways. I tried the guys' ways. I tried the high-value bullshit ways, however accurate they are for general people. But when I made it personal, it fell apart. It completely fell apart. That's why philosophically you need to go to the table with your own philosophy, ideas, will, vocabulary, and who you really are. The script doesn't apply anymore. The script makes you look weird and makes you look like a cardboard cutout, a robot, a, po a political puppet, or whatever it might be. You look like an idiot spouting one-liners and trying to be tough. I felt like I was in a, in a lion suit trying to follow the manosphere in the cookie cutter, say this, say that, PUA kind of way, men, women, blah -de blah I, I felt like an, I was in a lion suit. But when you actually have learned to speak and know who you are and what you want and not apologize through your very polite vocabulary of expressing who you are, there you feel invincible because you're being you. Just the way I was then when I was describing that. It feels liberating rather than going there nervously like, oh, oh, there's no point, probably won't work. The only thing I can get out of this is a bang and dump and then I'm back on my own with the fellas high-fiving each other in our little rooms online telling each other that we're right. Um, it was only when I was honest about who I was in a mundane way. Because I find that the mundane personal everyday stuff really interesting and you can find out who they are and if they're interested who you are through the mundane talking about stuff and the world like yeah interesting I, I want the why and how of who you are and if you're bored with that fine you're not for me because then it becomes simple not easy but simple and clear to know <clears throat> How, do, how I needed to deal with relationships. Because if I'm thinking and speaking like this and this feels like home to me, yeah, I want someone else who can think and speak ballpark-wise and bounce off this in their own way. They don't have to be me. They don't have to be a genius. But they need to like this dance. They need to be directed in the directions uh, that I am and, and speak openly and, and want to, in a liberated way, be themselves in front of me. I, I went on dates with women who are very open and I was like, good for you. You're being yourself. You, you might not be for me, but I admire a real person for once. I think there's so many people dating today. They're just so sick of the cookie cutters that it's no wonder that they think men and women are all the same. We're all scared people, not having the courage to be ourselves, not having the interest to speak better and to express ourselves. And then logically, you just imagine like we're all the same. Of course, you're all the same if you're all fearfully the same of not showing who you are. There's no way you can even see if you're compatible with anyone. I just didn't want to waste my time with it. So I failed before Stephanie many times and I learned about myself what did and didn't work anymore, whose words were bullshit or basically didn't fit me and what I wanted out of life and who I was, that's why I wasn't working. It might work for someone else, but not for me. And I have to know what I want so it can work for me. And I encourage thinking and speaking better so you can assess better during this. So this kind of comment, any woman has the power to ruin your life. Yes, it's true. Any female out there does. But when you go on a date, when Jane becomes real, you want to trust Jane, assess her better over a period of time. And it'll only come if you have the courage to speak and be yourself and express who you are and insist they are and walk away when you know and see that they're not for you. That's all you can do. That's the best you can do. The consistency over time was, was a huge factor of me knowing that I could trust Stephanie over time and us getting closer and moving in together and her coming to Australia and us now being together. And at the end of the day, look, there's no formula. And Stephanie mentioned this to, to me this morning. I was telling her about what the topic was for this uh, stream. And she says, at the end of the day, you've either got two options. You can either be on the edge with you've prepared as much as you can and you either say yes and you take a calculated risk that you can recover from. You can either say yes or you say no. That's it. There's no use complaining 
that it's not perfect that every time you press the button you don't get a you don't get a toy coming out of the machine it's not luck the more you deal with the more you insist that this is skill the better results you're going to have and you're going to get the person you want in a in a kind of um not relying on luck way in a more willful way in a way that you're proud of yourself that you didn't just stumble into perfection but you recognized compatibility and then you skillfully tried and they did too i would i would leave you guys with this the ones that still say yeah but she could still no matter how good you feel in the moment she still could 5 10 20 years down the down the line ruin your life completely and become jekyll and hyde uh, from dr jekyll to mr hyde i would say this if you're sh so sure and saying that's not worth dating any women not trying and you think there's no point because it's too risky you know everything so you can recognize you're really quick in recognizing when a woman says the first couple of words, yep, yeah, you're like every woman, right? If you come across that seems like the exception, could you let a good opportunity go without at least talking more, getting to know, and then you see they're consistent, they're the exception to the other walking lemmings out there. Could you let a good opportunity go and then you get to 70, 80 and you're always thinking about it and say you let one of the very few opportunities that come across without investigating and seeing what's there. I'm not saying jump, again, out of the plane without a parachute. Take your time. Take as long as you want, gentlemen. Be prudent, but communicate and be who you are and don't play these games. Could you live with yourself letting a good person go because you're so convinced of the religion of your group online, your manosphere or your girl power chicks or whatever? A lot of women do that. They're convinced of the girl power religion right and then they get later in life and all the guys laugh at them and say yeah you didn't have the courage to be yourself and be feminine and stuff well same with the guys with all your posturing and stuff could you live with yourself letting what looks like a great opportunity an exception go without investigating and talking and seeing over time at your pace if it's real do you even know what's real or do you just take the science Oh, the stats say this, I don't have to think. Therefore, I'm not dating and all women are poison. Fine. Fine. Do that then. I don't care. But for those of you who, with your will, and you want something, and you know there's a way, because there's just too much objective evidence out there, there's too much empirical, like I know too many people, I've seen too much, and it's largely to do with your attitude. You believe you can't, you won't. But if you believe you can realistically, not delusionally, but realistically, especially if you can change the way you approach things and how you, your mindset is, then um, uh, there's just too much evidence of people trying and having courage and having will and uh, dating with skill and intent as opposed to uh, the million people out there who just do it the lazy way. And if you don't want women, that's fine. Live in the woods. Women, you don't need men, fine. Why are you fighting? Why are you angry? Why? If I, look, if I won the lottery, like I'm complaining, say you you have to work, you complain about your boss. Ah, oh, work and bosses, they don't pay you enough and the system, they tax me and blah, blah, blah. You win the lottery. Do you think if I won the lottery, if I, and, and I'm taking this as like certain, like if you're certain about men, women now, like that's it, they're done. If I won the lottery, my certainty, I win the lottery, I don't have to stress anymore. Why would I keep complaining about my bosses and work and the system? I don't care. I'd have a mansion. I'd be going on holidays, lying on a beach, doing whatever I want, laughing and enjoying life. I would not care. But you do care. But many of us are too stubborn and afraid to just take a little risk. They don't even want to pull a Band-Aid off. Pull a Band-Aid off. You're not going to die. Jeez. But again, keep the Band-Aid on. I don't care. We probably need less of you, if I'm being honest. Again, this is, the, this is the grumpy old man side of me. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to drag you over the finish line. I'm not going to do the work for you. If you don't want to philosophically try, I'm not your parents. I can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. But for the rest of you, try. Take the risk. Find out. It's the only way. 
Uh, take a look at an old conversation I had with Quasi Man Dias a couple of years ago. Uh, it's called You'll Never Know If You Don't Try. I think it was the title of the video. Long conversation podcast on my chat channel. I think it's somewhere buried in um, this main channel as well, but it's it's on my chat channel on the homepage, a link to it. Uh, Digi Nomad, he says, uh, similarly, when I run into the people I dated from the past, I I thank 71 pounds, 8 ounce baby Jesus, I dodged that grenade. Clarity is refreshing. It also creates space for better candidates. Yeah, look, the old photo albums, especially if they're not always positive, you get reminded of them because we tend to think about positives in the past and we tend to bring up old exes and want to get back with them and we just think of the good times. When we see them in real life, we bump into them, we see the, the negative, like how they look now. They're not the image we remembered them to be. But don't just feel good about yourself by the negative of like, ah, I'm better than her. I'm, I'm lucky. Like it, it is refreshing. It clarifies. But go towards something good. Go towards what you want. Know that that's beneath you now or not for you and go for something better. Uh, any last questions? Uh, Cobra Commander says, best of luck to you and the missus. Just because I am making a different choice doesn't mean I wish you pain or misery on you. Yes, thank you. Uh, but some people are like crabs in the bucket. They either, if you're not with us, you're against us. And you might think you're happy, but I don't like it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to prove you're wrong because of the stats. I don't know. Prince Revolver says, by the way, human, that hasn't, that wasn't directed at you. Your content has helped me time and time again. Thank you, man. <clears throat> Brian says, women are reacting to men bad by emotions. Men should react to women bad as rational thought. The emotional charge is the trouble propped up by the idea women should never feel bad. Yeah, we're driven in different ways. But again, it comes down to you. What do you want to get out of life? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to stop stressing? Do you want to s sleep better? If the only way you can feel alive is to get angry at other people, I would contend there's better ways to do it. Nikos Niko says, as a 42-year-old single male, it seems that I'm getting to the point where I am really feeling that... Um, it is getting more difficult to date or just be around women more than just in the bedroom. Yeah, I've, I've said this before. The older you get, the harder it gets, Nikos. And it's just, you get more specific. You lose friends. You'll be more and more alone. You're less open. You know yourself more. You can't tolerate. You can't just give sh stuff a shot anymore. You can't pretend you haven't seen things. You can't pretend you haven't gone out with the same woman again. And you just want, don't want to do it. Your peace and tranquility is more important. You don't have enough time to waste. You've passed the halfway point of your life. You're very aware of being more sensible. You can't just keep having fun. Or at least if you're sensible, you can't. Again, it's your life. Uh, Digi Nomad, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. My date asks why girls wear track pants in public. My date asks why girls wear track pants in public. As in the leggings or the actual baggy track pants, the 80s ones, the thick gray ones. Are you talking about them? I don't know what you mean by that, did you? Yeah. Don't know what to say. But I read the comment out. Uh, did you know me? I died laughing. She's funny. Shocker. We went out again and she, and she dolls up. Also, she wore track pants. Okay. Uh, Aria says, we appreciate you, human. I get what you are trying to say. <laughs> trying, I know. I blab a bit, don't I? <laughs> I love angry human. Because it's human to want companionship. It just sucks that the hobby is dead. Yeah, when it becomes a, a hobby that you realize you've outgrown... You just don't have any more fuel left in the tank to do it. It happened to me. Look, I, the, you guys who are very happy just to be on your own and stuff, and I get it. If I didn't, via luck, her contacting me and, and coming across her, I wouldn't, uh, I, I would probably still be single. Uh, I, I wasn't dating. 
I, I wasn't on dating sites. I was just enjoying my life. So it's just about choices, guys. There's no kind of big answer for this. Sorry. Like, I know people want cookie cutter answers, but if you want what's right for you, you've got to figure out what's right for you. If you're lazy, you'll buy the three-step program and you'll recycle all these programs and what everyone says and some things work and they don't. But what's the point if it works with the wrong person? You need to know what the right person is and you're only going to know that first if you know who you are. Then some of what they're saying can help you start a conversation or something, those practical things where you don't know how to start something. But once you get in there and make the woman into Jane and you make it real, then that's the most important thing. Zayman2020, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate the donation. Um, Boston guy says, would human be talking like this if he hadn't met Stephanie? Not with what I'm learning now, like because there's certain things I reference actually being with her now and living with her all the time. But f before I met Stephanie as well, my channel took a, a very philosophical approach and a lot of the kind of red field sphere found me very kind of boring because I, w I didn't want to talk politically anymore because just I, I didn't find any solutions there. Yeah, it's kind of accurate pointing it to the big picture, but the big picture isn't solving my small picture at all. I just keep talking in the big picture and feeling alive in the big picture, but my small picture is non-existent and it's not fun. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's nuance. I can't pretend to say that the influence of having a happy relationship with Stephanie hasn't influenced my outlook, but I was talking more relaxed about this and I wasn't angry even before this and I wasn't as popular as the channels that do talk that other way that I wasn't talking. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm big enough to admit that meeting someone and uh, empirically seeing that things are different has uh, led to a nuance of the way I speak about these things. But I was already philosophically speaking about these things and trying to be fair and saying, yeah, but what about us? Um, yes, women can be objectively uh, pointed at and they do this and they're entitled and this. But we've got to stop saying yes to them. We have to stop spending so much time. We can't be the nice guy. We can't stay in relationships. We start seeing these huge red flags and they do these bad things and we stay and we stay and we stay and we stay. And we should have left after a few months after seeing these things and we've been there for three years. And our excuse is, I'm a nice guy? No, you wasted two and a half years of your life. That's the truth. If we could go back in time... Would you do the same thing again, nice guy? I bet you wouldn't. That's the truth. So I was already talking about that. Go back. Go back uh, uh, four years ago, five years ago. I was already softening in that. And so even before I met Stephanie, I was like this. I kind of let it go. I wanted to have conversations about you about having a better life, letting go of this stuff. I'm more about the letting go and I don't want to stress and deal with your deal with gaslighting and what are women? What? I don't care. I don't care what you want. I care about potentially who's in front of me, who the people I care about, the woman I want, the life I want. That's what I care about. But I'm tired of this us against them and fixing the world. And by the way, I haven't even taken a sip of coffee. Why would I? It's 36 degrees Celsius here. But um, anyway. Brian says... I've given, up, I've given up because I wanted a family. At my age, that wouldn't be the best idea for kids. Dad being 60 when they start driving. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I was talking about this with Steph recently as well. I can understand the people that always wanted kids, but it's very dangerous and you just keep dating and it's the same women and they're selfish and you just know they wouldn't be good mothers. You just know. You can't roll the dice and think, well, this entitled like head case, I hope... Kids will like snap her in like she'll wake up like Eckhart Tolle and, and be this wonderful mother now. She was this person and the, the baby lobotomized her in a great way and now she's the perfect mother. You can't take that risk. She's probably going to be the same person, have postpartum depression, be neurotic, be selfish and say, how come my life isn't the same as what it was before I had a kid afterwards? No one told me this would be the case. So, um... I, I have sympathy for the guys who really want family and kids because the environment out there is very dangerous. And all I would say is if, whether you want kids, marriage, you want to be with someone is to take your time and learn how to speak and communicate. 
S communication between the two of you and honest communication is the only blood that's going to keep that the, the relationship going and alive. You can't keep stuff compartmentalized. You can't live your life and she lives her life and you can live from a distance and raise kids and <clears throat> that's that's an excuse. You can point to one weirdo that you probably don't even know online and he says, oh, it works for us. We live in a polygamous relationship and we've been doing it for the last 10 years. It's like, yeah, are you like them? Do you hang around people like that? Are you... Anyway. I'm not talking to people like that. I know. You guys aren't like that. Fit, fit fingers. Any chats coming up in the future at all? Any particular guests? If so. Yeah, be, before New Year's, uh, I... I I had a, a an email or two between Quaz and I had one between Spetsnaz as well. But Christmas was coming up and the guys, you know, holiday season, they were doing things, they were moving around, they were, and they both sort of said afterwards. I, I haven't sort of really heard back from any of them. So Quaz or Spetsnaz, email me back uh, if you would like to organize a time because I'm always happy to have a chat and I can put it up. But aside from them, I haven't really, I don't keep in contact with many <clears throat> guys from the sphere anymore and they don't keep in contact with me. I used to, but I used to have them on servers with me and they used to be subbed to my server and, but now they don't like want to and they don't want me part of their group. I've inquired and without they're not being rude, but it's evident that they would rather not me be within their group. And that's fine. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk with anyone, especially the old school guys that I used to hang out with, uh, the, the, the MGTAW guys, those guys that I used to have good conversations with. I don't think I've really had bad conversations and recorded chats with people. If, if people go on about Paul Elam. I had a great conversation with him. I like the guy. Yes, there's the politics between him and what he said about men and stuff treated me well. I had a good conversation with him. He's he's entitled to his own opinions about things and ideas and people. Uh, it doesn't uh, bother me. I can disagree with him as well. But um, and and this is the thing I want to encourage you guys. It's it's about your personal relationship with the person in front of you. They you should be able to di agree to disagree. Not so much if you're trying to find a compatible partner. But uh, I miss that we used to be able to have different points of view and and attack these questions about relationships and in, in life from our own esoteric very um subjective lives and now it's kind of like everyone's out in their own little silos with their own little sects and religions and groups and it's them against the world and it's like a little clubhouse anthony says um why do women speak negative negatively of men who do not approach them why do they not consider the fact that maybe that guy cannot approach them because of circumstances in his life? Yeah. Why don't you smile? At, uh, again, guys and girls, you want to talk. Girls, you would like to men to approach you, be approachable. Smile. Look at them. Say hello. Let them do the heavy lifting. Let them lead the conversation, but make yourself available. Stop requiring men to fight for you and and make more effort and ask you out and be more traditional for what the environment's too dangerous and women made it this way i'm not blaming women but there's a reason why men are now just being conditioned to be silent and not as masculine and not say certain things and be censored it's just easier make it easier for men to be more traditional see that you're friendly but stop just being silent and letting women girl power speak for you and nothing changes men look at the environment uh, cl nightclubs have closed no one speaks to each other uh, I, I i think also women aren't that interested in what men have to go through today why don't men do this why don't why don't you ask them why don't you care why don't you have some sympathy but you don't it's just why don't men do this why don't men open the, why don't men why aren't men doing this anymore where don't care don't care be approachable if you want to be approached. Aaron Williams, what are your thoughts on Sydney Mictown? I haven't talked to him or, or seen anything about him for a while, so I don't... Is there something that happened? I, I remember his videos from years back. I don't know what happened to him, if anything happened. I have no opinion one way or another. From But from before, we exchanged an email or two. We never got to chat. <coughs> 
he seems like a nice guy i remember i really liked his car he used to do videos in his um i think it was his volkswagen gti and um yeah i respected him from that because i think we we're both into rally type uh hatchback sports cars him and i and i remember i once commented to him and he seems like a friendly guy i don't know what you're referring to though if anything happened prince revolver thank you for the super chat if any of you would like to leave a final message super chat me before i end the stream soon he says the wake up call i got was you ruined my life i couldn't stay any longer is that what she said to you prince revolver you ruined my life i couldn't stay any longer or did that stay did that voice was that in your head is that what you said to yourself anyway any last comments or super chats and we're going to wrap this up because i don't think talking and expending this much energy is doing my cold or whatever the hell i've got any good let's wrap it up so any last comments if you would like to leave a comment make sure you add three circles like that and i will do my best to answer it all right have a uh, listen to the last stream i did last sunday i think no it was not last sunday it was the midweek before i think i did on a friday thursday or friday midweek because i had a family weekend about uh when guys say you know love scares me there's it's dangerous things like that Brian says, Aaron Clary says, women seem to not like men that much. Also, when what you want requires someone else, you have to consider their wants. Yeah, just keep it simple. Go on a date. And if you can tell she doesn't like you and she's entitled and she's like wanting you to prove something and she thinks she's better than you, then rack off. Dates are supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be personal it's supposed to be open and you know all of that stuff not an interview fit finger says stardust recently had a convo with a gen z creator and it was fairly interesting would you consider talking or have you talk to anyone in that generation which with regards to their relationships i do often talk to younger people that drop into my server and uh I can recognize they, they, they think about and they're going through a lot of challenges that I never did, but they also, I notice that they, they don't, <clears throat> they don't have, um, whether the will or optimism to change the way they think. Rationally speaking, I, I recognize the dangers, but the moment I say, yeah, but what about this? And you can think this way and you can go about dating if you want to this way and then you can take it or leave and they're like they're looking for black and white answers by which to see if a path is safe to travel before they've even investigated it and so and they rely on science and and i realize but there's just a lot of ways of thinking that they think that i don't anymore and i recognize there's a distance of age but um i think stardust is much better at talking to and understanding people much younger than him and uh, realizing and uh, and being more simpatico with their struggles not that i i can't objectively be sympathetic to the struggles they're going through but i can't pretend that there's not a way around it through it especially if you change your attitude or you try things a different way now if you don't want to if it's not you i understand that but the some often nihilistic black and white attitude of there's only one way and this is the way i am in the younger generation i i can't offer them any other ways forward they refuse to to do or think about things any other way um and they'll say to me but what about this there's no other way except for a and i'll say no there's b c d or e dependent on this this context and they'll go no it's black and white and there's a lot of black and white thinking that while is accurate when they're talking about a or b they refuse to talk about the nuance of c d e and f if that makes sense so but stardust is much better at being simpatico with uh, the younger generation than i am i can be sympathetic but i can't pretend that there's aren't other solutions and other ways of thinking and i think that uh, maybe they might think i'm closed-minded 
look, if you're sensible, I'll agree with you. You tell me your story, what you went through and the struggles. And I can, I, but I can't just agree with you and tell you you're right. If I can't say, well, while that might be right, I, I don't think that way. Or have you tried this way? Or don't you think that women feel that? And if you feel the same way, you're opposing each other. What if you ask her this or you're more open and instead of the fear or whatever, like the, the stuff I'm talking about on these streams, I recognize the way I talk might be a bit alien to them, but I, I find I can't, um, I have a harder time talking to a younger, say more online gaming generation to step outside of their very siloed thinking. I can talk to Gen Z and whatever that are more out there and trying to be entrepreneurs and and trying to live in the real world and they're still very maybe stubborn because i can get them to be more practical and suggest more practical outcomes but i, I feel like i have a harder time with gen z creators that live their lives online this i, I can't form, form a bridge but anyway i've, I've uh, i'm blabbing about that Ah, Cobra Command, thank you for the super chat. He says, warm bourbon and honey for the throat. <clears throat> yes, I'll definitely have something like that after this stream. Matt A, I don't think it's fear for me. Just acceptance that I'm not Chad would be nice, but that's okay. Figure out a way to be happy on my own, or am I kidding myself? No, be like, you're realistic. Like, if you know you're not Chad, fine. But... She thinks she's Cleopatra. She thinks she's, I don't know, a Victoria's Secret model with a Mensa IQ. And she's not. She's delusional. And she's expecting you to be objectively Chad. Well, like you're both, like you're both not living in reality. And if she is, she's nuts. She's delusional. Like you don't want to have a relationship with that. And I know it's tiring. You go out with more delusional entitled women. But unfortunately, the, women, the world is full of them. And um, yeah, it's it's really like a a needle in a in a in a field of wheat. It's just very hard to impossible to find. All right, guys, I think I have blabbed enough, and I do have a cold, and so I'll wrap it up. I've been going for just over an hour. I was going to wrap it up at about the forty minute mark, but I do this quite af quite often, don't I? I say, well, let's wrap it up soon. Any final questions? And then an hour later, I'm saying the same thing. So if there's no final super chats or smiley face comments like this, then I will wrap it up in 20 seconds and counting. Have a great weekend and uh, think about this. Take the risk and find out because you'll always be wondering and especially if you've got an opportunity in front of you that's like, this seems different. This this seems what I've been asking for. This looks like it's for me. This looks like a girl that's different from others and is someone I'm really attracted to. She's different. She speaks. Am I really just going to say, nah, I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to talk to her. I'm not going to try. Because if you're an entrepreneur, if like I'm driven to draw, and create art and, and and do what I want. I'm driven to do what makes me happy. And if I'm driven to, I know I want companionship. I know there are, while rare, good women, and not just good women, because there's a lot of good women that I've gone out with that are incompatible. It still doesn't work. doesn't mean I blame them for being a feminist. They weren't. They were just incompatible and they were terrible for me and etc. cetera. But um, be realistic and ask yourself, are you being prudent or are you just procrastinating and you're just simply afraid of the dark and you're afraid? You've prepared enough. You're prepared. You, you know enough. You're, you're a genius compared to the idiots out there. Go out there and, um, yeah, be the, you're a professional in this area. Go out there and try and know what, you know what red flags are now. You know what landmines you're not, not going to step in. And no, you can recover. You'll go on dates and you won't take it any further. But if you're a guy that 
you know that like I don't even want to go in on a, on a date because as soon as I like a girl that's it I can't say no well then maybe you shouldn't maybe you're right but it's not women's problems that's a you problem have a good weekend enjoy I think we've got a long weekend here in Australia Labor Day tomorrow so that's good I can rest another day and uh, leave your comments down below if you have a microphone jump on Gilded a lot of us jump on Gilded have a chat and uh yeah join the channel and try all right try or don't i don't care but for those of you who are a younger version of me somewhere in that ballpark if some of these words light a fire up your butt or speak to you differently give it a shot what do you got to lose if you can always go back and try again and you really not lost nothing aside from time you go into something a date or whatever eyes wide open having your limits and you know you'll go no further you're aware you're not drunk you're aware of your own things and you know your limitations and then you're aware of what you'll lose and give up you know that i'm not going to spend any more than a coffee i'm not going to buy her dinner uh, i don't care about her demands i want to get to know the person go in there eyes open Prepare for the worst case scenario and then doesn't work out. Try again. Try again. Keep trying for the things that are important to you, but don't be led by your emotions completely. All right. Okay, guys, I hope you found this loot useful. If so, join, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do. And I'll see you in the next stream or video. Ciao.